Oh, there you are, ghoulies. Here we are once again in the castle where there's never a hassle. Uh, we're always a good time here. Uh, you've joined us, Lilith, once again. I'm here again. Uh huh. I don't know why. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, my God. There you go. There you have it on Crimson Theater. But uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be worth your while. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You promise? Uh-huh. We've okay. got Vincent Price in the house tonight. Well, okay. I can understand why I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> With Tomb of Lygia. A great Edgar Allan Poe, Roger Corman, Vincent Price collaborative that Edgar could have never known about. Well, of course not. But they're they're almost like partners more. in crimes. Perpetuators of the uh, Poe. You're, I think you're getting into something that you don't want to because you're going to upset the wrong people. Okay. They're going to come after you. So. I okay, think they're going to come after me. That's interesting. <laughs> in any case, we love it when Vincent Price is here in the house. Yes. And, uh, well, he certainly did a lot of work. Yeah. It was the uh, son of the, the, the guy that owned the Price candy factory in St. Louis, uh, Missouri. <laughs> it's, it's always an odd one. You know, when you look at Vincent Price, St. Louis, Missouri doesn't come to mind. No, never. I've been to Missouri. No. Yeah, but when you articulate proper English nowadays, people simply assume you must be from Europe. Of course. No one speaks English these days. <laughs> we all speak Texas. Well, it's such a slang. Can you believe it? It's not even... Boy, when I, when I was in school as a wee lad, you know... They were very worried. They were worried about words like ain't. Ain't oh, is now, yeah. I believe ain't is now uh, uh, spell checked on a it is. on your phone. It is. <laughs> I actually know so, that for a fact. And they, they, so and they were opposed to this because they felt that it was a de deterioration of the language. It really was. Yeah, well, they didn't know how much everything else was going to deteriorate with it. but <laughs> Yeah. It, it, it seems like some pretty crazy stuff going on out there. And people's driving habits certainly prove this. Uh absolute disregard for anybody else but themselves well, that's nothing new i think it's gotten worse though, it's gotten worse later. but it's not a new concept it's people are pretty self-centered what are you gonna do they're driving way too crazy in the texting thing that's the checking in down. this is getting to be fanaticism but it's good it's just a, every click is being every click i believe is uh being provided as information to some corporate uh, global overseer. Oh, yeah. oh, they'll come see me for about this, talking about that. Yeah, huh? yeah. But you're right. Like, you click on one ad and suddenly everything is about that. I, I mean, you oh. know, I'm sure they would dismiss me as a, you know, as a conspiracy theorist who has a horror host TV show at Channel 14 well, in Kenosha. I'm, I mean, that would probably just... How much more loony can you get? Like, I it's don't, all good. Well, you can try to just do this in your basement. <laughs> That's true. At least we're not that bad. Well, you enjoy doing actual television production, or uh, you know, I kind of just like to leave everything uh, the way it is. But the castle sort of through the weeks, uh, it it's sort of alive itself. So changing. it kind of it changes its body. Yeah, it's a little worrisome for me, but okay. It's worrisome. Yes. If you haven't seen some of the archive shows, I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna figure out who the right person is. And I'm going to hand them. Here you, you go. It's been the, hours just it's, watching. It's, 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 it's going to be boatloads of uh, uh, plastic buckets full of Crimson Theater. Ah. There's so much Crimson Theater oozing out of the castle walls everywhere. That's amazing. I'm stepping on it. <laughs> the cats puked on a couple of them. I mean, oh. you know. <laughs> you can keep those. I, don't, well, I didn't put those away right. But then uh, there's multiple duplicates. There's... A whole a year of shows done in the basement and uh, of the castle, of course. Well, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and and then there's all that stuff that's on VHS. Oh, the good old. I don't. I, there's no way I can possibly remember everything that's happened on this show. I know some of the highlights. Oh yeah. Making Igor like other men. That was yeah. that was a big one. I've heard quite a bit about that. And Crunchy Black, a beautiful Bert, is Sora Johnson. That was a that was an epic show, and of course those dinner parties. Oh, gotta love the dinner parties. Have you seen the old dinner parties? I've seen a few of them. The meltdowns? Yeah. Oh, there I've got those on YouTube. Those That's are right. up on YouTube. They're all chopped up. I've got a Doctor Destruction channel on YouTube, 
but it won't let me upload the entire show. Yeah. And then if it says uh, something's copyrighted, either music or oh movie or whatever it is, uh, they, they shut you down. You're blocked. Yeah. So I don't know what the, the future lies for Crimson Theater. I think uh, it, a matter of just uh, creating your own content, I think, is uh, yes. the future because... What you, have to do. you know, as we know, there's horror hosts across the land right now, struggling with YouTube, struggling on access television channels. Uh, access may be, I've said this before in Crimson Theater, but the rumor, the rumor mill's turning again, so I don't know. Don't call your alderman, though, at 12 in the morning to complain to him about it, because that's what happened last time. Yeah, I think that alderman's the city administrator now, so, you know, don't do those things. Call, and it'd be always, well, when addressing a public official, always be respectful, yeah. you know. Come the other on, it just makes everybody look bad if you're not. Exactly. Anyway, who never looks bad in a movie, no matter how old he is, the one, the only, Vincent, Vincent Price, Price in Tomb of Lygia and Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. Mm, soon. Our ghoulies and we got a special guest in the house mike cooper who is directing uh, a play called polish joke at the roadie center for the arts that opens up uh this friday the 9th or the 8th the 8th, the 8th. okay well tell us uh, how you got into directing this and uh what's it all about well i got into directing it because um well there were a couple of comedies available and i looked at uh you know, the other one, and I just wasn't quite getting into it. And I read this one, and it was cracking me up. There are a couple of scenes in it that are just so hysterically funny, so I just went, oh, this is going to be great. And there was some really, there's some really funny stuff in it, so I just decided that I wanted to do this well, one. Well, is, is the cast all Polish? I, I don't no, know if I'm no. getting it. <laughs> no, I think some of them have some Polish heritage, but... Um, but no, that's where the acting comes in. But... Uh, but and, there, and there's some fantastic acting. There's some really great acting in this play. These guys are just knocking it out so of the park. So what kind of method goes into portraying a, a Polish person? Uh, I guess reading the script and uh, I got you. Acting, you know, acting. I don't know. I just tell them to, you know, I tell them where to stand and, and they do the rest. You know, mm. I tell them learn your lines. They got their lines down. Uh, nobody's going to be reading the script. And, uh, well, you know, you've had Kenosha News come out. There should be a, something in the get-out paper Friday morning. Yeah, Friday. There better be. Friday, yeah, absolutely. They took some pictures. And... But, they, you know, the Kenosha News and their get-out magazine does the best for uh, promoting artists and, uh, you know, everybody in town. Yeah. They really do. I would uh, say so. I mean, so the other entertainment magazine does nothing for Kenosha, so... Take yeah. your money. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you just have to pay because people grab that thing at the grocery store. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You um, know. That's really prominently displayed. Oh. Okay. And, uh, well, can you give us a little bit of the synopsis of uh, of uh, Absolutely. Polish? Okay. Well, this there's a kid named, well, he's a, he's a grown man. His name is Yashu. Um, but at the beginning, he's, he's a nine-year-old kid, and he's talking to his uncle, and his uncle's teaching him, you know, trying to give him some, impart some information about life and everything. He's telling him, um, you know, you're Polish. Uh, it's a, people that are Polish have a really hard time in the world. They can't pronounce your names and everything. And, uh, you know, you get passed up for opportunities and stuff. So he's telling him. <laughs> this is the story, right? Yeah. Okay. He, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, mean, well, it's my life, too. No, but um, kidding. But anyway, he tells him. He tells him to uh, maybe it's you're better off pretending you're some other ethnicity. So he goes through his adult life trying to, to accomplish that, but his Polish heritage keeps coming back to him, and he can't run from it. He can't get away from it. So you know, it's it's ultimately just about accepting who you are as a person, and you know, being comfortable with yourself, and because. Well, I don't want to give anything away, but he learns a, a big lesson about it. There is a message to it, but it's also really funny. Just because there's a message doesn't mean it won't be funny. Um, no, it's, it's a good comedy drama. It's then. very, yes. and there there is some drama to it, and that's what I mean about these guys being great actors because they are handling the comedy so well. It's so hilarious. 
And then they're doing these these dramatic sequences that um, you know they're gonna it's gonna bring a tear to some people's eyes. You know, it's there's some really intense um, you know profound moments about fiber of a good stage performance. Yeah, it's great. These these guys are really because they're loving it. They, I was going to give them tomorrow off, but they don't want it off because they want to. They want to do well, this. Well, that means they really uh, get they're their hearts in it. it. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a little family. And you, know? you get into theater, you have you have no life, and right. that is the truest test of any actor is to have to go up there and have the whole thing in your head. You know, it's not like a film where they can stop. Right. right. So you know that's pretty pretty incredible. So uh, again, if somebody wants to. If they want to find out more about the Polish joke, the roadie, uh, give us all your information. Well, um, if you, uh, well, the roadie is the, the roadie center for the arts. It's downtown. It's five fourteen fifty sixth Street. Used to be the Lake Theater. Um, and uh, if you if you want to learn more about the the play and everything else that we're doing down there, we have a Facebook page. Facebook.com, LSP Kenosha, LSP Kenosha. Um, that keeps you updated on everything we're doing, auditions, everything. So, you know, I, I would, you know, it'd be a good idea to, to check it out and like the page. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we always keep people updated on that. But it starts, the Polish joke starts Friday, January 8th. It runs... Um, Three weekends, 8th, 9th, 10th, 15th, 16th, and 17th, and the 22nd and the 23rd of January. Uh, there's no Sunday showing the last weekend. It's Friday nights and Saturday nights at 7.30, and uh, Sunday's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, very good. I'm glad you could have joined us. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to make this an immediate uh, YouTube broadcast. Yeah, so, uh, awesome. All right, we're going to continue on here. And... Uh, Gruesome ghouls and grisly ghosts, wretched souls and cursed hosts, vampires bite and full moons rise, creatures haunt and terrorize, blood runs cold in every man, fog rolls in and coffin slam. The little green dragon, he sits on your doorstep. He eats little boys, puppy dog tails, big fat snails. Beware, take care. Hold the strings! Hold the strings! You're watching Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater on Kenosha Channel 14. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Oh, ghoulies, uh, wow. Tomb of Lygia. You know, how many times has a movie ended with Vincent Price in a burning building? A lot. They're not trying to say he's a flame. Don't say Well, I don't that. know. Why do they do these things? Uh, I don't know. They probably reuse the same Corman set again and again. Probably. I actually believe they did for a lot of things. Well, I heard the ca actual Corman castle now. That's quite a story in oh, itself. Oh, yeah. The Corman castle actually kept getting bigger. As time went on, Kinda and like it was quite a big. That is a big set. Yeah. So. I I am. It, it's it's fantastic. He must have had such a love of like the old Universal Frankenstein movies oh, to I'm, have built that. I'm sure he did. Just from his directing style and everything, I'm sure he did. And there's a guy that, uh, wow, for a young man to do what he did and just be able to stay, you know, he must have. Been, they must have been churning them out one right after another. Yeah. That's why they used the same castle. It was just like a, a series. How, what a cool thing to be involved in. And I guarantee you that Corman inspired uh, the uh, Dark Shadows, Dan Curtis. Definitely. definitely. I believe so. Well, yes. it, you can't, uh, definitely. It's just one of those that you have to be certain of. That his inspiration definitely was drawn. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how Tim Burton felt about having you know Vincent Price basically... I guess the last horror role or gothic picture, that's for sure. Yeah, but lucky that's a Tim great Burton. Scene. It's huh? a great scene, but Tim Burton yep. was very lucky. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he was. That was, uh, yeah, it was just amazing. What a way to make your exit 
from a legacy of, I mean, and it's not something he intended to do in the beginning in the first oh, place. Oh, yeah, no. He was just a serious character actor, you know, but uh, he got the bum's rush on being too many leading men because they wanted more... His look, his voice. Wait, well, talk, he's too sophisticated. Was, exactly. So that that was the problem there. So, you know, and then he found his niche. It's a and, great one. And, uh, you know, I heard he could be... Uh, our, Honorary at times, but we all have. <laughs> sure. I know, uh, yeah, he had some issues with other actors. Yeah. And crabbiness on the set. I mean, so. Consider what he's doing. He's going to be a little bit crabby. Yeah, but at least he wasn't drunk like Orson Welles. Exactly. Where has Orson been? I think we oh. should have him come back and visit us again, don't you? Again? Uh huh. Joy. What, I, you know, I mean, now that your bartending skills have. I've come up a, a little bit. bit. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Well, you know, it's rough when you gotta throw some bum out of the house. It is. It is rough. Yeah, that was a rough deal. deal. All right, ghoulies, we're glad you joined us for Vincent Price. Uh, lots of stuff. Got there's a monstrous Mardi Gras for a set for February 6th at the port. Uh, uh, upcoming uh, bash with Die Monster Die, of course. Of course. <laughs> and uh, what else? The, the down the line, there's a lot. So where there's some. Big announcements coming. Dorian Gray Art Show is coming up. That's April, but you need time to prepare and do yes. some artwork. Um, a- April 8th and 9th, we're at the uh, Twisted Sweet. Dreams <laughs> Film Festival in Milwaukee. I'm never quite sure on that one. Uh, yeah, that's April 8th and 9th. I'm excited for that yep. one. Yeah, and then I've got this thing in March 26th at the Old Goth Bar Club Anything. Club Anything. If there could possibly get a, re- uh, a revival. A goth, I think there needs to be a goth revival somehow. I, I would like to see that. I'm a little weary of Club of Anything now, but I would like to see a goth revival. Well, now they're doing whatever they can to survive yeah, a lot as of opposed to being a goth stuff. bar. But we don't necessarily have to have the goth revival be at that club. No, but there needs but to need, have one happen. Oh, yeah, we need. And not, not, not this emo-based goth. Let's... 80s trad goth guys come on <laughs> emo <laughs> yeah no no stop it well i don't know what are you gonna do you ain't gonna stop it you know that's always gonna be something else out there of course you know i know people that that were punk rockers that had mohawks and you know they said you know that, that they believe in the, all the freedoms in the world address the and they're now Complaining about saggy pants with a boxer sticking out. Well, well, hey, they're wearing clothes. I don't know who might have. Who might have? I am the last person to say anything about clothes. that. Huh? They're wearing clothes. Well, yeah, they're. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can understand it. Bunch of hollaback girls. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> ghoulies, you have a horrifying week. We'll see you next time on Doctor Destruction's Crimson Theater. That's right.